In this edition of City News, see why people traveled from all over the state to celebrate a recent victory for South Bay City. Also see why these Hawthorne girls have the ice skating fever. These stories and much more coming up on City News. Welcome to City News, I'm Jennifer Murillo. In 2014, Isadora Haar won a special election to replace former Senator Roderick Wright in the California Senate. Reporter Shantae Passmore attended his swearing-in ceremony at the Douglas F. Dollarhide Community Center in Compton. Isidore Hall, who is representing the 35th District, announced his agenda with objectives ranging from education to support of an NFL stadium in Inglewood. There's a lot of things happening here, uh, from obesity to diabetes, uh, from our most vulnerable uh, being uh, underserved by the lack of resources and, and access. Uh, we've got to do something to, to turn that. Himself is trying to bring back $250,000 of redevelopment funds that was lost during a redevelopment in 08 and 09, and he's working hard for us every day. Another item on his to-do list is returning jobs to the South Bay region. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to foster additional innova innovation in aerospace in the South Bay that has a long and proud history in our community. Hall supporters say they stand behind his policies for the district, which stretches from Inglewood to parts of Long Beach. I know that Senator Hall believes in the entire region benefiting from his policies. He's extremely good with working with the people. A lot of time they get in office and they go to their head, and it never went to his head. In addition to Hall taking the oath of office, the newly elected senator received the honor of having a street named after him in Compton called Isidore Hall Drive. For HGTV, I'm Shante Passmore. If you'd like to contact Senator Isidore Hall, visit his website at sd35. .senate.ca.gov. The Hawthorne Chamber of Commerce would like to invite you to be a sponsor of the 2015 State of the City Address and Luncheon. It will be held at noon, Friday, March 13th at the Hawthorne Memorial Center. To view the levels of sponsorship, visit the Hawthorne Chamber website at www.hawthorne-chamber.com. Not long ago, we introduced a mentoring program to viewers aimed at helping young girls find confidence in an unusual way. Shantae Passmore has the story. When we first met the girls from Power Project, they were conditioning to get in shape for ice hockey. But before they can pass the puck, they'll need to learn how to skate. So today is their very first day on ice. So they've never ice skated before. They were just trying to figure out how to put the skates on. So now we got the skates on and everybody got out on the ice and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, they were wobbly, you know, but they got it together and now they're just, you know, skating around. The Hawthorne Police Department program is an offshoot initiative based on the Hawthorne Force Youth Ice Hockey Group, but Power Project solely focuses on young girls. It's been fun because I see a bunch of different new, like new people and I make new friends and it's like, it's like hanging out. Not only are the girls having fun learning how to skate on ice, but they're also learning team building skills. <laughs> Facilitators paired the girls with partners. It made it easier to like <laughs> to skate because it's like you have somebody by your side so if you fall or something they can help you. And one of the young girls she was afraid and I said well what is it that you're afraid of? I said once you know what that is you can work on it and go out there and fall get up again. One girl said she first skated alongside the wall but ventured further from it when she noticed another inexperienced girl do the same. For HGTV, I'm Shante Passmore. To learn more about Paro Project, call Amika Bell at 310-349-2888. They didn't have to wait long to use these skills. The National Hockey League Players Association Goals and Dreams Fund continued its multi-city tour stopping at the Toyota Center in El Segundo. Alex Piston takes us to the event. It's all about goals and giving back. 
hockey was a big part of my life growing up, so seeing these kids have that chance and uh, come out and give it a try and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully fall in love with the game. With the help of the LA Kings and the National Hockey League Assistance Program, South Bay children were able to spend a day in a pro skates. You know, we remember when, when we were in that position, we were little kids and um, looking for equipment and just wanting and getting a chance to get on the ice and have fun. And, and with 25 new sets of gear donated to the Hawthorne Force and Girls Power Project, Hawthorne police officer and coach Darnell Wallace said that the kids could not be more excited to use the new equipment. And we started this program for inner city kids. They wouldn't have an opportunity to do this. So I jumped at the opportunity to come out and coach the kids because I love kids and if we could give them an opportunity to play a sport that they wouldn't be able to play. Founded in 1999, the NHLPA is one of the world's largest hockey assistance programs, giving over 60,000 children the opportunity to play this popular sport. Hosted at the Kings Training Center, the event also included food, a Q&A with Kings players, and of course, lots of hockey. I think it helped build my self-esteem and confidence and helped me learn more about myself. The Hawthorne Police Officers Association also donated $10,000 to keep these kids in gear and on the ice, giving them a chance to play the sport they love. For HCTV, I'm Alex Piston. For more information on how you can help the Hawthorne Forge Youth Ice Hockey Program or Girls Power Project, visit www.facebook.com forward slash Hawthorne Force. The 9th Annual Battle of the Badges Blood Drive recently took place at the Hawthorne Police Department. The event, sponsored by the American Red Cross, helped save lives by collecting blood donations. As we know, you know, blood supplies are, are historically low and blood is a product that expires, so there's a constant need for donations. Sergeant Gabriel Lira donates blood three to four times a year because he feels it's his way to give back. I've had family who's, who's needed it and um, it's coming really handy, so it's something I, I really believe in. If you would like more information about Battle of the Badges or would like to donate blood to the American Red Cross, visit www.redcrossblood.org. Coming up next on City News, a colorful project is taking place at a local elementary school. We'll show you what. There's more news ahead. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The city of Hawthorne is asking residents to take the 2015 through 2019 Consolidated Plan Survey by February 23rd. Consolidated Plan is used to obtain input from residents on affordable housing, community development, economic development, and other needs of city residents. This survey is required by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and allows Hawthorne to utilize the Community Development Block Grant and Home Investment Partnerships funds. For questions regarding the survey, contact CDBG or Home Coordinator Mari Guerrero at 310-349-2976 or to obtain the survey, go to the city website at www cityofhawthorne.org forward slash latest dash news. Cutting edge technology has gone to the next level with the world's first 3D printed vehicle. We visited El Camino College where the car made a stop during its world tour. In 2012, Local Motors originated the idea for the 3D printed car and with the help of Italian auto designer Michelle Anu, the design was developed. Two years later, the vision became a reality at the International Manufacturing Technology Show in Chicago. Our trade show began on a Monday. We started printing this on a Sunday evening. Uh, 44 hours later, the printing of the shell of the car was completed. We spent the rest of the week assembling the car, and we drove the car out of the building on Saturday morning. The car named Strati, which means layers in Italian, was printed by stacking many layers of carbon fiber reinforced polymer, then molding the pieces into the necessary shapes. The zero emission vehicle is comprised of 40 parts and can go up to 40 miles per hour. This was a collaborative partnership between our association AMT, Local Motors, a Phoenix company that does low volume production vehicles. We worked with Oak Ridge National Labs to develop the technology. Cincinnati Incorporated built the only machine in the world that's capable of 3D printing a car. And then to see from a small toy car that we might print on the 3D printers we have here in the manufacturing technology department to what you, a car that you could really drive when it gets a motor in it is it's just amazing. It blows your mind. I've actually had the privilege to see other 
3D stuff printed out, but like in a smaller scale. But to see someone like something like this is pretty incredible. Strati's tour is intended to showcase the latest in manufacturing technology and the many possibilities found in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education, or also known as STEM. We need more students in STEM, so I think it definitely helps encourage them and kind of get them on the right track and understanding what's available out there and kind of encouraging them to go and discover what's possible, what can I do. The CARS visit to the campus got many students to stop by and ask questions about how this 3D car came to be. I find it amazing how technology has gone so far. I remember when the 3D printer, you can only print like small little things and now we've done a whole entire car. Although the Strati is still in its prototype phase, it has gotten people talking and asking what's next. To learn more about the 3D printed vehicle, visit imts.com forward slash Strati. It was a communal effort at Peter Burnett Elementary School as students brought their families and friends to help paint a new school mural. Mamdou Sali has the story. It was a picturesque Saturday morning suitable for outdoor activities, such as painting a mural. And that is exactly what members of the Wiseburn community collaborated to do. Spearheading the project was Tiffany Graham, who works for PS Arts an organization that provides visual and performance arts programs in public schools. So it benefits the community by beautifying it. It benefits the community by bringing awareness to the importance of arts and education. The theme of the mural is building bridges and breaking barriers. The idea came from the challenges students face as they grow, as well as the transitions they make from one school level to another. You will see it throughout the mural, the students are showing elementary school, they're showing what they think will happen in middle school, and uh, they're also supporting things that are going on in life. Students working on the project shared similar feelings of excitement. Building bridges, like you learn more as you get like older, and like breaking barriers, it's like where you grow and you like figure out new things. The first grade setting you up for the next grade and then it's just going to go on and on until um, college. There were 450 students from Peter Burnett Elementary that drew personal articles for the mural. Miss Graham then collects all the picture drawings. And doesn't have any names or any child that it's related to because there's no name on it. She cuts them all out, puts them all down, and then tries to make a mural by making it cohesive where it runs through the theme but it brings in everybody's talent. My mom helped me to paint and I mixed colors and I had fun. Graham says the project always seems to generate so much enthusiasm from students, faculty, and parents alike. For HCTV, I'm Mamdou Saleh. The mural at Peter Burnett Elementary School will be unveiled on March 28th at Dana Middle School at the start of the Rock Around the Block event. The Hawthorne Park and Recreation Foundation is once again hosting the annual golf tournament. This year, the money raised will benefit Genthorpe Park to help fix the gates on the baseball field and also help the Castle Preschool. The tournament will be held at the Coyotes Hills Golf Course in Fullerton on Monday, March 30th. If you have a foursome that would like to play or would like to join with another group, call Dick Hewn at 310-643-9157. That does it for this edition of City News. Thanks for watching. If you have any story ideas, please call us at 310-349-1630. Don't forget you can watch City News online at youtube.com forward slash HCTV22. We'll leave you now with footage from the NHLPA event. See you next time.